testing the uh, voice recording software on my phone so we should hit see how well it picks up because I'm actually sort of half planning to do a couple of shots of um, like external shots but because like I don't want to exactly show my face or anything but I still want good audio I might have to make a external voice record and then just add it into the video so then it's still awesome and my handy cam which I'll be using for all these external shots because you can't really get see what you're doing with it action cam um, doesn't is an old one it's a fairly old camera Ooh, I always get afraid of doing that like it's gonna tip over or something so it doesn't have an external mic it's external mic because that's how it's spelled, but it's actually external mic. Oh wait, hold on. That was fucking lucky. Oh. Otherwise I would have watched my bike just fall over. And I would have been like crying, going no. But I got some news for people. It's fucking awesome. I'll wait till I get on the road there. Fucking let's get out of here. You gotta fucking dive, dodge all these fucking things. Ooh, yeah, let the clutch halfway out and let the bike do the work. Oh, no, I don't want second gear, I want neutral. So, one thing with my accident, it's fucked up my uh, automatic neutral. It's uh, quite fucking annoying because it never used to happen. Oh, yeah. So that fucking thing that I tried to fix on my fairing with the, the busted mount is now busted again, so I gotta fix that shit. So annoying. What a fucking glorious day. So my actual voice recording software I think has wind noise cancellation, unless that was the other one I had. But the one I'm using is the one that's built into the phone, so hopefully it does a good job. Because Samsung's usually pretty good at that sort of stuff, but I don't know. We'll find out when I go take it home and check it out. Ooh, we got a lot of push bike riders. But the weather is fucking beautiful. Don't mind me, peeps. I'm not being a dick. That lady looked like she was gonna die. She's puffing. But, um, yeah, glorious day because it has changed season. It is no longer winter. Holy fucking shitballs, I love it. Bike riders with their fluoros. Holy shit, I should have cleaned my helmet. I can't fucking see much. Yeah, so the mount that's like this plastic goes right around, busted again. So I'm pretty pissed off about that. But oh, well, shit happens. What do you do? Just keep fixing it or just buy a new one? But I don't want to buy a new one because 
no doubt in Omi Kawasaki, when you go to buy a fairing, it's probably gonna cost like a hundred odd dollars or a couple of hundred bucks. So I'm gonna avoid that by spending 10 bucks on, what do you call it? Epoxy. That shit. And I'm already finding a problem with this second mic in my helmet that I'm just chewing on a freaking boom. On, not a boom, like the, the fluffy stuff, whatever it is. Num 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 num. Holy. It's a bloody nice day, but fuck these windows annoying. It's been like this at work too, like, I had the shed door open at work and it's just like hurricane winds coming in. Kids blowing on my paperwork everywhere. Giving me the shites. So the news, the news, oh yes. So if you have been following me since day one, you would have known that I was talking about buying a, another bike. Buying a uh, more of a cruiser style bike. And for those that guessed it, it is an X Ducati X Diavel S Ducati. Oh yes, baby. That thing is a beast. So I took my first steps into acquiring. I haven't actually done anything like in buying wise, but I went for a test drive is what I'm trying to say. A little test ride. I went to Sydney, uh, Fraser's in Sydney. I was like bored one day and I was like, bugger it, I'm gonna get a test ride out of the way and see what they're like and see if I actually like the bike. Now, as with any super sports rider, getting on something that's got more of a cruiser sort of style is going to be weird as shit. Like you're gonna find it very hard to sort of go, why are my feet so far forward? And I'm six foot four, as everyone should know by now. And this thing was ridiculously comfortable. Like, the feet forward position, the reason why I'm looking into this bike a lot more now than what I was before, is because my missus lives four hours away and I want to ride my bike to her because it costs like a quarter in the fuel to get there as opposed to my car. And riding a super sport to Sydney all the bloody time is freaking painful. Like holy shit. Like your knees go, your ass goes, your, and your wrists. If you're not doing like the minimum of the speed I'm doing now, there is no inertia taking the weight off of your wrists. There is no inertia to help you like lift your body weight up a bit. So then there's not so much pain. And you know, with the amount of cops and speed cameras and that, there's only a certain amount of sections where you can get away with that kind of thing. So it's like, it's it's fun, but it's a painful ride because it's four to five, like 400 odd kilometers on a super sport. The only time I've done like a lot of Ks like that in a day, like when, I, and it hasn't been too painful, is when I've been with my mates and we were riding super fast and we ended up doing like 600 kilometers in the one day. But there was a lot of breaks, like we had like three breaks that day, so we had plenty of time to recover. It wasn't just all in one hit. And it was always at speed, because we're a bit like that. We're kind of hoony. Hoony. Kind of sounds like horny, but we're not. That'll be very odd. But back to the bike, because I keep digressing. Yeah, so I got on it and I was like, oh, this is comfortable, but it's so freaking weird. I was a bit skeptical at first, but once I got the bike starting to move, from out of the driveway, it was like, oh, this is actually not hard to sort of hold up and stuff. And the handlebars are quite wide, so it's pretty easy to sort of uh, turn and everything. Even though the bike weighs about 40 kilos more than this one, I think. Um, uh, what's with my helmet? Stupid thing. The clip's just not working properly. It's not clipping down the uh, visor. There we go. I think it's in place now. I think the little knob's worn or something. <laughs> knob. But anyway, um, yeah, and then like Sydney being Sydney, there was a lot of traffic, but he told me, oh yeah, go down to M4 for a little bit, and then you turn off here, you turn off there, and then you get, you get to like this park area where it's just like a little bit of windy roads everywhere. I was like, right, I'll do that. So I did that, I got into this place, and just turned around, and like, this bike, holy shit, man, it is actually agile as fuck, like, I can pretty much turn it as quick as I can this bike and it's got a 240 rear tire so everyone's going to be thinking oh that's going to be slow to corner no it's the exact opposite this thing leans easily it's got it's a cruiser with a 40 degree lean angle it's like holy crap it, it can actually corner and here's the best part here's the part that made me, my butthole pucker up this thing has 128, if I'm correct, Newton meters of torque at 5,000 RPM. I didn't think, because this has 
111 at I think 9,000 RPM. So I felt this thing when the when the torque fully kicks in, and it was like holy crap the first time I did it, and then I was just like, yeah, now I'm pretty used to it. So it's just like I'm, I'm used to 111 newton meters. I never thought for a second an extra like 17 newton meters of torque at a lower RPM would be that big of a difference. But whole on like something that weighs 240 kilos wet. That is a lot. I was like at the lights and I took off to see how much power this thing had. I had it in sports mode as I do because like I've, I've never taken this out of sports mode when I had, when I first bought it. I was just like, this here is my power control. I don't need to dull the power down to get used to the bike. And I did, like I stuck around on, he said I'll leave it on urban so you can get used to the bike, which I think was sensible once I get used to like the maneuverability and whatnot. But then after I got used to that, straight into sport mode, I'm just like, fuck this, I'm going, going for it. Off the lights. I swear, like, this is no word of a lie because on a similar sport, you're already leaned forward. And there's only, like, if you're, it's not hard to sort of hold yourself in position when... Come on, mate, go. Are you fucking serious? That was stupid, but that guy was taking too freaking long to overtake, like seriously. If you're gonna overtake, hit the fucking throttle. Jesus fucking Christ. Anyway, um, wow, I lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, I took off from the lights, and because you're sit in a cruiser position, which is like, you're neutral, like your spine's straight up and down, your arms are out like this, and your feet are forward, I took off from the lights, and holy shit, I have never felt anything like it. I was like in warp zone right then. Yeah, it was like it was like I just hit Wolf in Star Trek or some bullshit like that. I was like, literally no word of a lie because I was just, I wasn't prepared for it and I was just sitting neutral. I wasn't sort of leaning into it. My hands were literally starting to go like that, trying to hold onto the handlebars. I was like, grabbing for dear life, like holy fuck. But I didn't want to let go of the throttle because it was so freaking awesome. Oh mate, it was the best feeling I have ever had in a straight line. Like, oh, like, ooh, yeah. That felt good. And then I just couldn't help myself. But then there was a problem that, no matter every corner I went around, there was a freaking cop. Like, I went around the corner at the back end of this parky place, and there was a freaking motorbike cop on the other side of the road. And I was like, oh, I'm just gonna cruise past this guy. And then I'll get on the other side of the park and just fucking gun it. And then I went around the park again, and then there was a cop that came around in front of me. And I was like, oh my god. And they, they gave me two hours to ride this bike. I rode it for 45 minutes, and I'm like, I need to go back. I'm gonna lose my license in this rate, because I couldn't help myself but gun it off the line. Feeling that inertia was just like, it was like a drug. It was like, give me more, give me more, oh yeah. I was on such a high after that, I was just like, as soon as I handed it back, I felt so much regret. I was like, oh, I want to ride more. Then, like, but I've got a plan. Never you mind, I have a plan. Because I was talking to a mate of mine to come down from Coffs Harbour, I think it is. Um, and yeah, sort of convinced me to go for another couple of test rides before I buy. Because, you know, it's an expensive bike. It's like, for a brand new one, I think it's like 35 grand, but I can get it for 30 grand as a uh, demo model. Problem is with demo models, and I know with that bike in, in general, it's gonna be hard miles, because no one's gonna jump on that bike knowing how much power it's got, how much torque it's got, and not pull that throttle as hard as they can. I couldn't even open the throttle all the way. That's how much it scared me. I don't get scared often on motorbikes, especially in straight lines. But that thing, at like two thirds throttle off the line, I couldn't 
like the head was getting extremely light and the guy even said to me like off the line like low rpm this thing will get the wheel off the line off the uh, ground i should say i was like when i got back i was like not wrong not wrong i couldn't full throttle that thing because there was just so much like pull and I, like, I was almost getting blown off the back of the freaking thing and the head was getting so light my steering was becoming like shit. Oh, this guy's gonna fuck me, isn't he? He's gonna fuck me. Nah, it's a fucking pee plater too. Body poofter plates. No offense to anyone that's pee. What the fuck? Is what the fuck? Dude, seriously, you're not driving a semi trailer. You don't need to bloody go out on the wrong side of the road to get past someone that's pulling over. Especially when you got that big beast coming towards you. Oh, oh there's too many cars. Oh, hold on. What the frick is that guy doing? Seriously, I think he needs to go back to his old plates. He's not even paying attention to whatever the fuck he's doing. Focus on what's in front of you, buddy. Don't look at me. Doesn't matter what I'm doing. That guy didn't see me at all. Second gear on this bike gets really lightheaded. That was getting lightheaded to the point where I was almost going to lose steering halfway through that overtake. Why is everyone going so slow? It's freaking 100 k's here. Just fuck off. What is it? Cool. It's like, what did all the grandmas just come out on the same freaking day? No offense to grandmas, but we, we love you grandmas. I love you grandmas. You're all cute and cuddly and stuff. Oh, I want that bike so bad. It is seriously like sex on wheels. Like there's no, there's no other way to describe that bike. It has got sexy lines, it's got beautiful wheels, it's got fucking sexy ass like um, exhaust pipe, which I would change anyway because it's not, it sounds like a V-twin like in stock format, but it's too quiet. It's not punchy enough for me. But I'm, I'm in a bit of a predicament because, you know, as my YouTube channel states, I'm Six Foot Ninja. The whole reason I come to that name was because I ride a ninja. If I sell this bike in order to get that bike, I no longer have a ninja. So then my name then becomes obsolete. I don't know if you can change your name, but I don't want to because the Six Foot Ninja is catchy and everyone knows me as Six Foot Ninja now. So like, but then I'm trying to think of ways on how to procure this bike without selling this one because I love, I love this bike. This, since I was a kid, since I was like 10 years old and I've always been into motorbikes. I've never actually owned a motorbike until like a few years back. I've ridden motorbikes since I was a kid, but never owned one. This is the second bike that I've ever owned. And it's like, ninjas, for me, were like the all in and end all of motorbikes. It's just like, it was such a big name. And they were known for being super fast bikes that just kicked the fuck out of everything. Even though they probably don't, but I mean, I'm just saying, that's like what I perceived as a kid. Someone's doing some mad painting over there. Let's get in there. Um, fuck, it's getting hot. Already, it's not even summer. Holy shit. Yeah, I'm fucking waiting for you. Oh, he's turning anyway. Yeah, fuck. I'm just like, I love this bike so much and it's never caused me any problems. I've never had a mechanical issue with this bike and it's got like over 30,000 Ks now. Not once has there been a mechanical issue. The only, the only quirk that has arisen has been because of the accident, because I snapped the bloody shifting rod when I had the accident, and now when I'm, oh fuck, I almost got balls up there. It was close, but no cigar, thank fuck. Yeah, it's just, oh mate. It's like, you pull up and go to shift into neutral, and this bike had some form of mechanical aid or whatever that stops the bike from shifting into second gear when you're trying to find neutral. I don't exactly know what it was, but it made finding neutral exceedingly easy. It didn't matter how hard I pulled up on the lever. 
it would go straight into the neutral every time. Now, after the accident, it seems to have lost the ability to do that. And on top of that, when I'm shifting down into first, when I'm still rolling, occasionally it will go into neutral if I don't press hard enough, which is another thing the bike stopped happening. If the bike knew that it was still moving, like there was still, you know, K's on the clock, it would not allow you to go into neutral. It would drop down into the next gear, which I found a phenomenal feature. I loved it, but now it only works like half the time ever since the accident. So apart from that, which wasn't the fault of the bike, it was the fault of me because I've lent into the corner too hard and low slide and just snapped everything to pieces. Um, the bike's in phenomenal shape still though. But nothing wrong with the engine. The engine's like buttery smooth. Oh yeah, mmm butter. I'm bread, nom 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 nom. We're on a roll. Oh fuck that, I'm not going down there. There's too many cars. This place is so busy. It's freaking weekday. Why is everyone like out and about and not at work? Like, honestly, do you not have jobs? I use like the lazy people that are sitting on the dole and I'm paying your wages with my job. Fuck you all. I ended up with so much tax last year because of dole lodges. I don't know if it was specifically because of dole lodges, but I'm gonna blame them anyway because they're douchebags and I don't like them. Stop fucking bludgeon. Unless you have a legitimate reason to. Like a medical issue or something. Or an injury or whatever. <sighs> yeah. But I'm almost at the gym. And I'm happy I got that out because I've been meaning to make... Like this was two weeks back that I rode this bike. And I'm so sorry that I didn't get footage when I was on the bike. I didn't have my camera on me. Plus I didn't actually ask the, uh, the, uh, the bike shop as to whether or not they were okay with me filming. So I didn't bring the camera anyway for that reason. But this bike is so fucking smooth. Like it's just such a predicament and it's so fast. It's such a predicament trying to think, well, should I trade it in and get a new one later? Because the design of this bike and everything that I've done to it and whatnot is like, it's not cheap. So getting a new bike is just gonna make it harder. But I want the Duke because it'll make my life riding to see my girlfriend a lot easier and a lot less painful. Anyway, I'll see you on the flip side when, probably when I get out. Or actually, I'll probably start the next video from when I get out. I'm trying to catch up because I'm not very consistent. So I'm just getting a bunch of footage up so then I can uh, quickly edit it and get it all smashed onto the YouTube for you fellow ladies and gents to uh, view. And hopefully it's entertaining enough. As for my last video, I was pretty tired, so that was a not very energetic video as opposed to today where I'm on pre-workout and I'm freaking hyper as shit. But anyway, I hope everyone has a good day. And I'll see you in the next video.